subject, whatever you want to call it, entitled when it seems like things just aren't working out. When it seems like things just aren't working out. You may be seen. A lot of us, we can honestly say that sometimes in life, it has a way of throwing up a curveball. Sometimes we can say, sometimes we really wonder in the midst of it all, God, where are you at? Mm -hmm. Now, I want to tell you something. If you never question God while going through a strange Come season on. in your life, mm -hmm. I want to tell you, you lie. Come on, make it plain. Because I've been, and I'm a preacher, I've been through some things in my life, some strange things in my life, and I've been trying to say, God, where are you at? Right. I realize that sometimes we have distractions that may come our way uh, just to give us a curveball of off the path that we really should be on. Right. Uh, Amen. Oh, uh, my God. Sometimes we have some things that we go through in life, but God only puts us through with the sea. Do we really trust Him? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. A lot of us say, God, I love you. A lot of us say, God, I trust you. Uh, but when you go through a storm in life and you go through some situations in life, do you really begin to trust God then? Right. Yeah. That's when the devil has time to go ahead and play with your mind. Mm. See, the devil understands if he can get your mind, he, he got, got everything. everything. Yes. If you understand about a place, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Play from the Himalayas. You know, you know, back in those days before I was saved, I was yeah. in the church, but I wasn't in the church. Uh -huh. I know some folk want to say I wasn't walking the straight and the narrow. Mm -hmm. I was actually just taking this way and taking that way. I was the type of young preacher that what I did, uh, I would talk to young ladies and I would have sex. Okay, I'm going to be real because I don't have nothing to hide. Preach, preach before up. I preach, uh -huh. I had sex with them after I preached. Uh, but it's not until I begin to deal with God, I begin to say, God, I really need you to work on me. Yeah. I'm trying to have everything else try to answer the question, but I realized when I looked at these things to answer the question, it's not answering the question. Mm. The problem with a lot of us is that we're learning how to go to the wrong source. Love mm. So what we think, we think sex is the source to get the answer. Mm. What we think, we think oh, drugs is the source to get the answer. What we think is when you got that great Who's getting a little bit of loser? That's the thing to get you the answer. But I want to tell you, that's not the thing to get you the answer. Sometimes God has to take us to a place just to get back on our knees, learning how to pray. I know everybody knows how to gossip, but my question is, do you know how to pray? Do you know how to get on your knees and say, God, I need you to do something. I need you to work it out. But my thing is this, not only when you're going through something, do you get on your knees, but when it seems like everything is going good, are you on your knees? Oh, yeah. A lot of people only get on their knees and start crying out for God when they need Him. Yeah. But what about when you don't need Him, are you still talking to Him? Yeah. Oh, that's the problem. That's why a lot of our relationships uh -huh, can't work out good. Uh -huh. mm. Because once trials and tribulations come, once tragedy comes, then we don't want, then we don't want to talk. Uh -huh. But I realized what led up to that point was because it was a lack of communication. Yeah. Uh -huh. And before you got to that point, you weren't talking. Uh -huh. uh, but God had to throw something your way just to get y'all to talking again. Uh, so it is in the natural, so it is in the spiritual. Uh, sometimes God got to throw some things our way just to get us back on our knees. Oh, Lord, help me here. The question always asks me, when was the last time you prayed? Yeah. Right. And I'm not talking about, no, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul to take. No, I'm talking about when you were on your knees and you were praying through. No, I'm talking about when you were on your knees and you begin to feel the tears coming out of your eyes. I'm talking about when you were praying through and you begin, oh, y'all don't want to talk this. And you begin to say, Lord, I feel the burden here. Lord, I feel the weight here, baby. When was the last time you got on your knees and said, Lord, that was the last time. Yes. Because we want to do our thing. Yeah. yeah. I realize this doing our thing, Pop Warren, 
<laughs> uh, it's not the best thing to do. Uh, doing our thing, it will mess us up. Doing our thing, it will lead us into a road of destruction. Yes. Oh, the Bible says that this is a way that seems right unto all men, but the end result is death. And that's what's going on inside of the church today. That's what's going on inside of the world today. People are thinking what they're doing is right, but they're not really doing what's right, and they are in a dead state. Lord, help me here. And that's what's going on in the church. A lot of people are in a dead state. And if anything is dead, it cannot produce fruit. Lord, help me here. And see, this is how we got to learn how to produce fruit. But you got to produce fruit when it seems like things are going well. You got to learn how to produce fruit when it seems like everything your back is against your wall. You got to learn how to produce fruit when it seems like everybody's saying you can't do it. But you got to say, I can do all. All things. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. I'm not saying I got every hour of work every day. But guess what? I can go, Lord, like the Bible said, not unto him. Yes. Able, Lord, yes. It was not the goodness of my own. Because the truth be told, I should have had an STD. 
HIV. Uh, it's true because I should have had HIV. Uh, oh. Oh, 
Oh, that's why I realized I got to love. Yeah. Got to love. Preach, preacher. Yeah. yeah. All things work together for the good. Yeah. yeah. That love God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're who are called. Yeah. Oh. I want to stop right there. All right. Because everybody ain't called. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people think they're called. Mm. But they ain't called. Mm. Think. Because some people had to do some things. Mm. Mess with this person, mess with that person. My mm. Lord. Just to get called. Uh -huh. mm. they had to really, uh, but you had to go through somebody else to call you. Uh -huh. But see, when God has called you, yes. when God has put his stamp of approval yeah. on you, yeah, that's right. you don't care what nobody got to say because yeah, exactly. I know who called me. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. God called me. Uh -huh. yeah. Not man. God did. Not my mama. God my mama only bad me for nine months. My daddy oh. had to see. But guess what? God called me. Yeah. He yeah. said to Jeremiah, he said, before I formed you in your God God God. God. I already knew you. Yes, yes, I want to tell you something here. Yeah. All of us in here got a call on our life. Yeah. Whether yeah. you want to believe it or not. Yeah. I don't care from what walk of life you may come from. You may have went to the club last night. You may have slept with somebody last night. But let me tell you something here about this God. The Bible, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible told me that if that gifts and call is coming out repentance, yeah. I don't care what you may have gone through. God still got use of you. I don't yeah. care what it may yeah. seem like, what mess you may have been in, but God still can turn your mess into your message. Yes, and that's what he's trying to do in this hour. Yeah. Because I realize yeah. this, Pastor Warren, people this day, they don't want to hear nothing fake. People mm. this day, they want to hear something mm. real. A lot of people are saying that they are called. Uh -huh. and they're doing the wrong job. Uh -huh. mm. Oh, I love that. That's uh, good. Oh, God, help me here. Uh, see, my thing is, I realize, uh, uh, Minister Lynn can play the piano. I can't play the piano. That's what he was called to do. Oh, Lord, help me. My wife can make chicken. I can make chicken just a little bit. Uh, but that's what she was called to do. Oh, Lord, help me here. See, Pastor Warren, he was called to go on the golf course. Uh, I could play a little bit of golf, but that's what I wasn't called to do. Brother BJ in the back, he was called to knock some people out. But guess what? He knocked some people out. I was called to do a little bit of that, but I can't do all of that. But you got to understand, I got to do what God has called me to do. And when God has called me to do something, I have no other choice but then to do it. So we find here, and as we go, he said, call the court to his purpose. Uh, my thing is, life's greatest tragedy is not death. Yeah. But life's greatest tragedy is living a life without a purpose. Yeah. Uh, a lot of us there are just living, uh, but we ain't got no purpose. Mm. Uh, what is your purpose doing here? Uh, oh my goodness. Yeah. 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 Who have you mm. touched Jesus. along this journey? Yeah. Uh, I realize this. Uh, we have a lot of infected preachers uh, behind the pulpit. Uh, mm. If you can't pull me out the pit, what are you doing behind a sacred desk? Uh, if you can't That's reach right. me while I'm <laughs> leading, uh, why are you standing behind this desk? Right. Uh -huh. Because I need, sometimes these people need somebody to tell you, I know that you're going through. I, I know what you're feeling like. Uh -huh. But guess what? I'm going to pray for you. Yeah. I'm going to be sure oh, God oh, sees you through this. Uh, I'm sure I got your back every step of the way. Uh -huh. Because, you know, at the end of the day, I am my brother's keeper. Yes, uh -huh. Lord, yeah, but we ain't got too much of that going on. Yeah. <laughs> because everybody's trying to uncover everybody. Uh -huh. But if you tell uh -huh. everybody got some skeleton, then they got yeah. uh -huh. oh, Y'all don't want to go there with me. I know people like to talk about sin. Oh, you want to talk about the homosexuals. You want to talk about the lesbians. But you're not talking about the liars. You're not talking about the backbiters. You're not talking about all the ones that sort of see the discord. You're not talking about the one that has a proud look. Let me tell you something. No sin is greater than any sin. Sin is sin. But let me tell you something. I know a God that saved you from a sin. Work together uh -huh. for the good of them. 
that love the Lord. Yes, sir. And a call according to his purpose. Yeah. I begin to look and pastor and just, Lord, now it's been <coughs> four months in the making. Four to three or four months, somewhere in that neck of the woods. But I realized I had to go through some things. Mm -hmm. I want to tell you something here. Anytime doing the will of God, you got to go through some things. Right. Anytime doing what God called you to do, you got to go through some yes, things. Sir. Sometimes your family may be the one that turned their back on you, uh -huh. but you still got to go through some uh -huh. things. But you got to understand at the end of the day, oh, you can't worry about what this person is saying about you. You can't worry about what that person is saying about you. Amen. At the end of the day, my concern is what is God? Uh -huh. Right. Right. But I realized this. When I die and I shut my eyes, I've got to give an account for myself. Yeah, I yeah. can't give an account for my wife. Can't give an account for my children when That's they come. Right. Can't give an account for this person and that person. Oh, I got to give an account for myself. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God won't look at me and he gonna say, What is wrong with you when you did this and you did that? Yeah. And you didn't go back and repent. Yeah. See, that's the problem. A lot of us don't want to repent to one another. Oh, you can't tell me you're sorry and you're still doing the same thing. Uh -huh. so, I need to come to you and I need to repent to you. Yeah. So you know what? I really need you to forgive me. Mm -hmm. We got to get back. And I learned something here in this time of doing this. I had to forgive a lot of people. Uh, I had to, I had to humble myself mm -hmm. yes. because a lot of preachers don't want to humble themselves. Oh, that's right. I had to go and I had to say, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And I found myself ministering to people that at one point in time I couldn't stand. Mm -hmm. See, people don't be real about that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I just couldn't stand people. I know who you are because I can look at you and say, okay, yeah, I, mean, I know what kind of walk of life you come to. It's because it's the gift that God has blessed me with. But I've learned not to look at where you are, but where you're going. Yes. Right, and see, right, that's right. why I had to get myself together to go yeah. back to repent to people mm -hmm. and say, I'm sorry. I don't know what was said because a lot of things get said but twisted around. Yes. Oh, you yes. have to forget about all that type of stuff. Mm. And the Bible says, let your gift and your titles down yes. and reason with yes, your Lord. brother. Yes, you got to learn how to get that forgiveness back in. Yeah. Yeah. And say, so you know what? In spite of everything that mm. took place, yeah. I'm forgiving you. Yeah. In spite of everything that may have went down, I'm forgiving yeah. you. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I pass you in. And I begin to think about everything that took place from there to now here. I begin to say, because sometimes I begin to lose faith. Mm. I begin to say, Lord, I'm trying to trust you. In the midst of this all, huh? And trust me, sometimes you begin to lose trust in God. See, y'all get quiet because y'all don't want to be real about that. Mm. When God don't answer, oh, okay. and when God don't make the way when you expect Him to make Come the on. way, you begin to lose trust. That's yes, true. sir. That's true. I've been there. Yeah. I said, God, I know you Pretty called me to this. Yeah. I told people like this: if I had it my way. I'm going to travel to Manchester. Mm -hmm. I'd rather just go ahead and preach to people and deal about my business. <laughs> because one thing about being a pastor is more than standing behind a sacred desk. Oh, yes. When you got to meet budgets and you got bills that got to be due. Mm -hmm. See, people don't know about that. When you got to do a folk call, I got a headache. Take an aspirin. Mm -hmm. But they don't want that. They want to hear what you got to say. Mm -hmm. When you got to deal with people, Day in and day out. I told folk if I had it my way. If I had it my way. Mm -hmm. And my wife would tell you. And I'm putting it out there. I had a good Baptist offer. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> Up in <and> Oak. <laughs> I said to myself. I said I could preach Baptist. I said I could get up there and I could say yeah. And you know, one thing I learned about Baptists, once you start talking about he got up and he rose, they get happy. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. You get, up. You, you get up, up, you don't preach yes, about it. Yes, sir. Yes. And I said to myself, I said, I can easily do that. I said, I can easily go ahead, preach to the folk, 
sit down, wipe my face, act like I'm done, and get right back up and still go in for some more. Uh -huh. <laughs> I can easily go ahead and just do what I've got to do. That was most. Yes. But the Lord said, there's more Come on. that I desire of you. Mm -hmm. Yes. You can't just do it like that. Because somebody needs to hear somebody that's real. But that can see the God mm -hmm. in you. Yes. Mm -hmm. I tell people, if you can't see the God in me, mm. it's no use for me to be preaching. That's right. it's true. If I can't love you, even with your faults, I should be no preacher. Mm -hmm. The name that the Lord gave us, we had three names. Now see why everything is going the way it's going. That was between me and God. First name was going to be Greater Victory Deliverance Temple. So yeah, that sounds good. You got deliverance on me, so you know. But then I said, no, I want to stem away from my roots. Because I know deliverance. People see deliverance, then that's when they don't want to. Then I said, you know, I could go this way. And I forgot the other name, Greater Bethel. But I was watching this show entitled Divine Restoration. And it stuck with me. I couldn't let it go. Divine Restoration. And I said, Lord, what is your revelation about this? He said, Son, it's going to take somebody to be in divine order mm -hmm. to help restore the people. That's mm -hmm. yeah, good. I just had to get in divine order mm -hmm. Come on. to help restore people. Mm -hmm. But I could not restore nobody if I didn't go through some tests and some trials right. and get restored after the test of the trial. Right. Mm -hmm. I've been through some things when I felt like giving ministry up. Mm. <coughs> but God. But God. But God. God. Yes, sir. But God. Yeah. Tonight I had to come a different way. It wasn't about a hoop and a holler. Mm -hmm. And I know some people saying, Kenny, oh yeah, when I go, I go. <laughs> you know, but I realize sometimes God ain't coming through a hoop oh. or a holler. Mm -hmm. He wants somebody to come and just talk to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. He wants somebody that can reach out and help you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he wants somebody to be a testimony. Mm -hmm. To let people know if I can overcome some obstacles in life, you can come some overcome some obstacles in life. Mm -hmm. That's why I said all things mm -hmm. work together. Mm -hmm. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Yeah. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, mm -hmm. acknowledge. Come on. And he will. Direct your back. Yeah. Yes. Sometimes it's hard to acknowledge God when well, it seems like everything's just going wrong. Mm -hmm. I felt like people were laughing at me. Mm. I felt like I missed God. That's how I felt. After getting word after word after word, hearing this and hearing, I said, Yeah, 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 that sounds good. But I didn't know I had to go through a drought. Mm -hmm. I had to go through something. Mm -hmm. See, God can trust you with everything. You can. Until you learn how to go through something. Yes. I had to be faithful over a few things. Mm -hmm. So that He can make me rule over me. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's why I can say I had to go through three months of trials and tribulations. But now I'm about to go through three months of restoration and harvest. Thank you, Jesus. For the Bible says the harvest is right. Yes. But the labors are few. Yes. Yes. 
Somebody got to get out there to reach out to the soul. Come on. Yes. That's my job. That's as a servant. But I'm laboring in the vineyard. Yes. I got to call. You all right? Just checking on you. Don't even know your business. Bye. I got to keep on laboring because you know what? A labor is somebody that builds some things. Mm -hmm. And building a foundation. Have you ever told me somebody could build a foundation? In two months? I'm really spe spectacled about that foundation. Because it takes time to build a smooth and a solid foundation. And when I looked here in the Lord, how He showed me everything. But I felt like God wasn't answering. He brought us here. Many of you don't know the testimony, but I'm going to tell you the testimony. We came here. Pastor, she kept on telling us, y'all been in my spirit, y'all been in my spirit. Every time she was so somebody in the building, she said, no. Can't give it to you. This person will come. No. But we came. We came here for service and she was asking for seven hundred and fifty dollars up front. She called us the night we came to her service later on that night. She texted and said, I'm waiting the two hundred and fifty dollar fee. All I want is five hundred. Called us that Monday. Said, I want to sow. $200 into your ministry. Yes, Lord. Wow. Look at that. Met with her last week, Saturday. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Talked to her. She said, Don't worry about it. I want to get the first month free. Look at that. Wow. Wonderful. Not only that, How'd you go? she took the rent wow. down. Yes, sir. $150. Oh, Hallelujah. Nobody but God. Nobody but God. But you know what it was? I had to go through something. Yeah. Just so God can show me that His hand is still on me and that I still have favor. Yes. Yes, yes sir. I want to tell you, you got to go through some things. Yes, sir. So that God can show you mm. that I'm still going to bless you. Yes. Yeah. If you look at Hannah, when Hannah was barren. And Benita was proven she was producing and producing and producing and producing. Trust me, she began to get mad. Mm -hmm. But I realized this. If you look at that time frame, that is when the sons of Eli were in the temple having sex on the altar. That's right. She could have got messed up. Mm. Because her womb wasn't shut up. Mm. God had to shut my womb up. Jesus. Just so that he could burst something else out. Mm. Wow. See, a lot of people want to go around and make babies. Mm. But I'm so glad that when God makes babies, yeah. he knows what he's doing. He knows how to pay child support. Yeah. Yeah. I ain't got to take it to no judge. <laughs> he paid child support last week. <laughs> because of favor. Of God. That's why I want to tell you, when it seems like things just aren't working out, yeah. I want to tell you they really are. It's mm -hmm. just not for you to see it. Mm -hmm. That's just God trusting you to see that you're really trusting mm -hmm. And do you have the faith? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I got faith, so much faith in God, how He blew my mind last week. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. And I said to God, I said, God, I'm going to do your will. And he said to me, he said, son, he said, I want you to continue preaching how you've been preaching. When we was going to go on the station boulevard, they'll tell you, I would preach like the church was packed. But God took me down to a small place. He said, I, I still want you to preach like the church is packed. Amen. Amen. Because I may not see the souls here physically, mm -hmm. but spiritually, they're on the way. Yes, yes. yes sir. Mm -hmm. But if God can't trust me with a few, Come on. Yes. My, my, my. He can't trust me with many. That's right. 
And I had to go through these seasons. Yeah. Then I'm saying. But when God did what he did mm -hmm. and how he blessed me, everything I begin to understand. Mm -hmm. You can't expect people to go with you all the way. That's right, that's true. Because sometimes we have people that's connected to us. Amen. That hinder us from getting our blessings. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, God. So true. You Thank got you. leeches that's on you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know what? God will hold up the blessing that He has for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because He don't want nobody else to get the glory. Yes, that's sir. Right. Yeah. Right. But you don't want nobody else to mess up the blessing that yes, he has for right. yeah. mm -hmm. Thank you, God. Amen. So I had to get in the place of being all by myself. Mm -hmm. It was comfortable with me being by myself because I was always the kind of person that could be by myself. Mm -hmm. I had a problem walking by myself. Before I met my wife, I was good by myself. I can go shopping by myself. Mm -hmm. I can go eat by myself. And one thing, if you know me, I like to eat. So y'all quiet, I like to eat. When I feel like this, I can sit at the restaurant all by myself, and, and, and the waitress or the waiter comes and says, Sir, you waiting for somebody? I said, No, I'm here by myself. <laughs> it's not common for me to sit and eat by myself. <laughs> because you know what? I'm secure in who I am. Yeah. I don't need everybody around me. Okay. See, Jesus, even when he had to go through some things, he had to go by himself. Mm hmm. But once you get back and you begin to look back over your life and see what God has brought you from, hmm. yes. you can really say, all things, all things. Work, together. work together. Sometimes it may gotta seem like it's bad, but it's working together. Clap your hands in Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank He's working together. Yes. Um, and I tell you, the Lord is in the blessing business. Yes, He is. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If He can do it for me, mm -hmm. I know He can do it for you. Yes. Even when I was down, when my faith had ran out and ran on low, when I didn't want to come back, God is saying, do you trust me? Hmm. But sometimes we got to learn how to just let go. And yeah, let God. And let God. I know yes, it's a sir. song, but you know what? It's some real reality behind that song. It is. It is. Sure is. When we learn how just to let go, and let go, that's when he can start blessing us. Yes. It's not I let go. Thank you. Until I took my hand off the situation. Yeah. Until I said, you know what, God, I'm giving it to you. And you know what? I know great is on the way. Yeah. It may not seem like it now. <coughs> but I can see it going. I told somebody, I said, I refuse to be a pastor. That does not have stability. I know that's right. I refuse to pass anybody, and I don't have stability. I had to shut everything down because you know I think it's in time to go on this trip, go on that trip, to go on this trip, go on that trip because it didn't look right. Mm -hmm. Most pastors are comfortable with it. Me, no, they ain't comfortable. <coughs> but I said, Lord, do what you got to do. And you know what's going to take place? He's going to do what he got to do in this house. And after this house, I believe God going to send us to another. But it's going to be bigger. Yeah. It's going to be what folk, because I, I already know my spirit. Because I already blew my mind hmm. that the souls are coming. That this place is about to get so packed. Yeah. That we ain't gonna be able to be here that much, that long. That I'm gonna, it's gonna 
be something going to break down and have service at this time and service at that time. Yes, sir. Because I said, God, I want you to send a Caucasian folk. Yes. Send them Hispanics. Yes. Send them all. Because one thing about God, God is not a one race God. No, He's not. Yes. Come on. Send them. I said, send the prostitutes. Send the drug dealers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Send the homosexuals. Send the lesbians. Yeah. I said, send them here because this is a place of restoration. Rest this is a hospital. Yes. yes. My, my, my. I'm just a doctor. Yeah. Doctor G. But Jesus is just the one that's performing the surgery. Yes. Come on. And he's going to do it. I said, God, when you send them, because it's not about money. A lot of people think ministry is about money. It's not about money. No, sir. When you're in it for the right reasons. Right, right. I'm in this for the souls. When I look at Mr. Virginia and I see where he's come from. Yes. I can say, God, hmm. I thank you. Yes. But it's just a sign that there's more folk like him yes. that I gotta reach out to. Yes. I don't need five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten armor bears around me. <laughs> I know how to work the field without without any armor bear being around me. But I gotta be the one that's touchable, mm -hmm. that's reachable, so that I can help restore somebody. I realize that I'm young. Brother Vivian, what the Lord said to me, he said, you're young, but you got to be a father. Didn't understand that because there's a lot of you that's going to be fatherless, that's going to need some help. And folk look at it and say, you're young, oh, you've been here before. I said, no, I ain't been here before this way. God just made me. I'm just young with old soul. <laughs> but I wouldn't change it for nothing in the world. But I want to tell you, you have to go through the tough season of your life just to get to where God is about to take you. It's working. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to find somebody here. Because I believe in love. And I want you to just let them know it's working together. And I love you. Come on, find somebody. Hug them. Come on, you got to see who can ride the love.
do something and the Lord has released me to finally do it. Because he said to me, he said, son, you're ready. And see, there's nothing like when God tells you, you're ready. My first invitation tonight is for somebody that's not saved. And you want to be saved. The best thing about it, I'm going to say like this. I didn't do everything right. But God saved me. Yeah. I messed up sometimes. But God saved me. Yeah. Yeah. Not even when He saved me, even while I preached, I done messed up, but He saved me. So, my first invitation to you tonight is. If you're not saved and you want to be saved, I want you to come. Second invitation is the same preacher I'm in the back sitting stage. But I got to some good news for you. As many times as we try to divorce God, God ain't never divorced us. No, yeah. For He said, I'm married to the back Yes, yeah. dear. Let me tell you something. I'm mad backslidden, but God was still there to say, guess what? Yes, sir. I'm still here too. Mm -hmm. well. I just let you have your time to play and do what you want to do. Right. And you know one thing I love about God? God would do things like that. Let you have your time to play and do what you want to do. Hmm. Of God and he had mercy it. before he killed it. Yes, sir. And see, I thank God for having mercy because hmm. a lot of people die <laughs> doing the same stuff that I did. Right. Yeah. But he had mercy. Yeah. Oh, bless his name. Father, hmm. Lord, you were. Thank you, Jesus. So I want to offer that. Thank you, God. Mm. And the final invitation I want to offer, if you're looking for a church home, and you're saying, Everton, because you know, they'll tell you, but the VJ and his wife in the back, they'll tell you, I'm down to earth, I don't go by no pastor. That title don't mean nothing to me. It's nothing but a title. That's all they are. My name is Everton, that's on my birth certificate. Right. That's on my marriage license. Everton. Right. Thank you. Bless her. Yes. Not pastor. Oh, bless her. Amen. And you say you want to join this ministry. You say because I believe in you. But not believing in you, I believe in the God. God in you. Right. I want to open the doors of the church. Amen. Even if you say I, I, I'm part of a church back at home, I need somewhere to go. Need somebody to watch over me. You come in the watch here. I have no problem doing it. So whether you see yourself in one of these three categories, it's over for you to come down. Give it a minute. Whether you're not, whether you say you want to be saved, if you're a backslider, or you just want to join this church and make this your church home. Come. Give me time. It's not hard. Amen. Don't take God to do what you got to do. Don't take long. Amen. Clap your hands in here. Now, we're going to take a hard tonight's offering. <coughs>